Okay, so I know I gotta say before we get started with this video that I am not a medical professional and I am not advising you to do anything that I'm talking about in this video. This is strictly for entertainment and informational purposes only. This is speaking from my experience and I would never ever advise anybody here to take any illegal substances, never. Never, ever, ever would I ever advise you to try magic mushrooms, never. If they're illegal, I mean, that must mean they're awful, right? I also don't wanna give you the wrong idea and imply that if you were to take this substance that you would have the same experience as me because honestly, you probably won't. Uh, and with my experience at least with taking shrooms a few times now, what I've realized is every trip is so different. Every trip. Even if you're taking the same amount you've taken before, everything is different and every person is very, very different too. And I'm saying that at the beginning, mostly because in this experience I'm gonna be talking about, there's gonna be a lot of things that most people probably would never want to experience. Um, and I don't want to just scare anybody uh, or make it seem like that's the only thing that can be experienced with this substance. It's not, I've, I mean, I've had the most beautiful experiences with mushrooms um, and this was one of them. Even with the bad stuff that I'm gonna be talking about or the perceived negative things that now like talking about it, I'd be like, oh my God, that's awful. But during the experience, it was just an experience. So if you're new here, I'm Cass. I make videos kind of about everything, like anything inspirational, psychedelics, I do tarot card readings, spirituality stuff, just a lot of a lot of fun, interesting things. So if that's something you're interested in, you know what to do. Link in the description. I got a Patreon where I do energy readings as well. Uh, and you know all the buttons to click if you want to, if you feel called to it. No obligation. If you're just here for this video, cool. Hope you enjoy it. I just felt very called spiritually to take three grams of mushrooms. That is the most, even now, that I've ever taken in one sitting so far. Uh, the most I had taken prior to that was, I think, two grams. And so this was not me just like taking mushrooms to get fucked up. Like this was me intentionally wanting to have deeper realizations about life and about myself and to let go of fears, to get to know myself more. This was intentional spiritual work that I was doing. It wasn't just like, fuck it, let's have fun type of thing. And so I decided I wanted to have a solo trip. And I told one of my friends that I was gonna be tripping in case I needed to call her or something. And I was just at my own house. I wanted to just be in an enclosed environment, which now looking back, I would have had a very different experience if I was outside in nature, but also that may have increased some of the anxiety that I felt if I was alone in nature as well, uh, if there was a possibility of like running into other people and stuff. So I don't know if I would recommend being solo on like a larger dose of shrooms. So now let's get into the come up. Okay, after I had consumed the shrooms, I drank them with some orange juice that I just basically plugged my nose Gargled down. I am not one of those people that can chew on a mushroom. If I taste them at all, I will have a gag reflex. So yeah, if yeah, if if you know what taste I'm talking about, you know, you know. So I put on some meditation music and then I just started laying down in this bed right here, right behind me. I had just some blankets over me. I was wearing very loose fitting clothes so that I didn't feel constricted at all. Um, or that was the intention at least. And I, I was just kind of starting to meditate. I was closing my eyes, starting to breathe, starting to just set those intentions. And my intention was basically just to let go. It's interesting, even though this is the most amount of shrooms I've taken in one sitting, this was kind of the only time I haven't gotten nauseous on the come up. Cause usually when you're starting to feel it, you start getting really nauseous and then that nausea goes away. Uh, I started with my eyes closed seeing visuals. So 
Uh, for me, that's kind of seeing like a lot of flowers that are sort of meshing together and like just lines that are sort of moving. And then when I would open my eyes, I would look at the ceiling or the walls and see them sort of just slowly like twirling and almost like melting in a way. Um, but it was just like beautiful and really cool and silly and fun. The one thing I see almost every time I take any amount of shrooms that can allow me to experience, you know, these types of visuals, I always see this like these columns and it's usually like on the ceiling I'm looking at, on the wall I'm looking at these columns of just the kind of typical like psychedelic things you see in trippy artwork like happy faces and really trippy flowers and mushrooms and things like that and like rainbows and stuff and they're all in these like columns that are almost like it kind of looks like a slot machine to me like they're like trickling down almost like a slot machine is like going through the the patterns, if that makes sense. Like, and then this is when I start feeling very cold and shaky, which is also something I experience almost every time I take shrooms as well, especially on the come up. Uh, it might be somewhat anxiety, but maybe it's also just me feeling a little weird in my body because like you're getting this extra sensory perception that's outside of your physical self. So you're like not used to it. But then my temperature kept going back and forth. Then I'd get really hot. And then I would also feel like the clothes I was wearing, even though they were loose fitting and that was my intention so that it wouldn't bother me, they were like still constricting or like annoying me in some way. So I literally kept taking on and off my clothes. And since I was at home, I knew like I could do that. And then, then I really started tripping. <laughs> Even though I was already seeing visuals, that to me was still the come up and still like just this like silly, goofy kind of time. I started like laughing a lot. Then I started experiencing time very, very weirdly. <laughs> I was able to completely experience the future and the past right at this moment. And not just thinking of memories of the past, thinking of hopes for the future, but genuinely being in those experiences. That's so crazy. I just got deja vu right now while recording this. That was the one thing I kept experiencing a lot as well throughout this whole thing was deja vu, which I'll get into in a little bit, but I had to say it right now because that was weird. That was crazy. It's so hard to describe. I don't think there's actual like words and ideas to describe the actual feeling and knowing because that's outside of our perception right now. Okay, so I think I found hopefully a good way to describe what I experienced with time. So let's say you're sitting in a chair in a room with a TV in front of you that's playing a movie and the movie's on a specific scene in, in the middle of the movie, let's say, and this would be the present moment. So you're seeing the present moment and you are not even you, you're just the observer of. So you're just consciousness observing whatever you're seeing in front of you. Now to your left represents the past. So you're seeing the same movie on a different screen, uh, which is playing a little bit before the scene that's playing in front of you. So that would be the past. And then to your right, there's the future. So the TV playing the movie is playing it about a minute after whatever you're watching in front of you in the present moment, this would be the future. Now, when you're just staring straight at this TV in front of you, you're observing the present moment. This would be our typical everyday experience with time. We are present and even when we're thinking of the past or future, we're in the present moment doing so. We're typically not actually experiencing the past or the future, we're just thinking about it in the present. But on shrooms, this extra perception allowed me to not just look straight with kind of blinders on each side, but turn a little bit to the right and turn a little bit to the left. And I don't mean turning fully to the right and only experiencing the future or the past, but just turning a little bit so I could see the present, but also see the future, let's say. So in this case, you're technically still tied to the present moment, 
like you're in the present, but able to fully experience a part of the future as well, or to the other side, a part of the past. And this isn't the best analogy because it still doesn't fully take in everything that I actually felt, but there, like I can't really explain it. I can't, there's no way to explain it because I don't even understand it right now. I understood it at the time, but I knew I was gonna forget too. I basically had this knowing that there's different extents of reality like the more real reality the one that's anchoring you in is the present moment but these other realities exist simultaneously you're just choosing to perceive the present as the more real reality so when i was perceiving time in this way i also was thinking of so many things so many experiences i've had that i completely forgot about it was almost like i was kind of replaying my whole life in my head it was crazy i also realized that since time is just perception that it's not set in stone at all that i i had this fear that i was gonna be in this state of mind forever and i truly believed that because forever would just be a perception maybe in the human world I would come out of this trip in a few hours. But in my perception, what if I was stuck for forever or for a hundred years, a hundred thousand years before coming out of this trip? And that's when the anxiety set in. I, I thought it had been hours. Like I thought it had been six or seven hours and it had probably been one hour at this point, maybe 45 minutes. So after the whole realization of time experience, which continued through the entirety of this trip, I was perceiving time in this way. Um, there was just a bunch of like random little things that were happening, things that I noticed, things that were weird or silly or scary. And so I'm just gonna kind of list all of those. So like I kind of mentioned briefly, I had the strongest sense of deja vu. There were multiple times where I was like, I have been here before, this is crazy. Like this has happened, I knew this was gonna happen. And then I kept hearing this phrase in slow motion, what about, what about? And that's kind of the way, and it was in my voice, but in my head, it was that. And the craziest thing is, that exact same phrase came up the next time I tripped and it was the same thing and it happens even after the come down, I still have that specific phrase in my mind and it just repeats and it's almost like this frustrating thing where I can tell it's my voice talking, like I hear myself, but it's not like a normal thought. It's almost like some something or someone that's just intrusive that's like what about and i'm like get out what are you why are you talking to me like but i don't feel that it's separate than who i am i'm not sure if this makes sense it's just this weird thing that happens probably every time i trip that specific phrase what about i don't know if y'all have any ideas or have had similar experiences let me know let me know i felt like i was in a new house as well it was very weird i like looked around my house and it just seemed new it seemed almost like blank in a way it was like things were just more empty than i was used to and then this one was silly this sounds terrifying but it it's actually really funny in the moment whenever i look in the mirror if i'm tripping i <laughs> I tend to look like Spongebob when he goes into Sandy's house without water and he starts like drying up and his face gets all dry. I'll try to insert a picture here. Bro, that's what I feel I look like on shrooms. I'm so ugly on them. It's hilarious, but it's like, I don't care. I'm not like insecure about it. It's more funny than anything. I'm like, oh my God, like I'm like SpongeBob, that's hilarious. I also was having these deep feelings of embarrassment. Like I was kind of almost picturing people in my life, like walking into my house and seeing me in this state 
and feeling so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I'm alone right now because I would not want anyone to see me right now. And then I, I became loneliness. I didn't just become lonely. I like became loneliness, which is not something I recommend. I really understood the connection between everyone in such a deep way that I realized there's nothing else but one thing, one being, one existence. And I recognize that that existence is consciousness, which is something I like believed before and already logically knew, but I, I really experienced it in such a deep way where I was like, I am the only one that exists and not me, like human self in this body, like having my life, but me as in consciousness, me as in you, 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 everybody, me as in awareness, as in God, as in the universe. So when I say I in this video from now on, that's what I mean. Like I as in consciousness. At first that was like wonderful. I was like, oh my God, we're all so connected. That's so beautiful. We're all one. And then I was like, holy shit. I'm the only one that exists. That means all these other people aren't really real it's just me it's just consciousness and even me as a human is not real like none of this is real and i fully saw how we're all experiencing the same consciousness from a different perspective and i realized that i as the universe you as the universe created separation to not feel as alone. And this made me so mad. I genuinely was going through the deepest feeling of anger I've ever felt in my entire life. I was so mad because I, I really didn't think I could ever connect to another person again because I knew in that moment with this experience, I knew that's not another person. I'm not even another person. We're the same exact thing. So there's no connection that has to happen if we're already just connected. This was the first time I ever felt that ignorance truly is bliss. I was like, damn, I really want to be able to connect with people. I really want to be able to see these people as separate than me so we can connect in different ways. And I genuinely thought that would never be able to happen again now that I know this information. And I kind of felt that there was no point to anything at this point. I could tell I was having major anxiety. I was freaking the fuck out. I was having an existential crisis. It was the worst anxiety I've ever felt in my entire life. Full on, like full panic attacks. And you know, the thought crossed my mind like, oh, I could call my friend that I, I told I was gonna have this experience. And then because I was having this experience, I convinced myself that wouldn't help because this person isn't even separate than me. So it, it's not gonna make any difference if I call somebody that's me also. Like, I'm here right now. I'm the only one that exists, so why the fuck would I call somebody else when they're not really someone else? It's just my own mind. That's my own consciousness from a different perspective talking to this perspective. And since I now have this overarching perspective of everything and everyone, there's no fucking point and it wouldn't help and there's nothing that could get me out of this state of mind even if I tried, it's not fucking worth it. And then I just went into this spiral of trying to understand why the fuck I did this. Why did I create this world? Why did I create this sense of separation? The only thing I could come up with was I kind of did it for fun. Like I, I as in the universe, got kind of bored with just being the only thing in existence. And I had this realization that I dug myself too deep, almost like this fake world, this separation world, which isn't real, has started to take over and I'm starting to lose myself. 
and it came to me in comparison to like AIs, almost like an AI that can have its own mind and develop itself. And it's gone too far and now I can't remember why I did this in the first place and I may never remember. And then that caused the deepest feeling of grief and of loneliness and of sadness and of regret and of guilt that I've ever felt. Now this next little section, um, if you are potentially triggered by hearing thoughts of depression or psychosis, things like that, then maybe skip ahead. I, I really think I went into a short term state of psychosis. This wasn't just me being a little out of touch with reality because I'm tripping on shrooms. And so as you can imagine, this was fucking terrifying. So when I'm in this state of genuinely, I do think I went into a psychotic episode temporarily, I was still experiencing time in this fucking crazy way. So that's when I was having those thoughts of like, what if I'm stuck here forever in my perception until I come out of this? And everyone else perceives this as it's been less than a day. But what if I'm here forever? Or what if I should already have come out of this experience? Like I genuinely thought it had been so long of an amount of time that I was like, I shouldn't be tripping still. Cause I wasn't looking at the clock. I And I know that seems like the logical thing to do when you're in the state of mind, you, logic doesn't exist. Like I, I did not think like, let me just write down the time and let me check on myself each hour or something. That didn't exist. So it was only my perception I was going off of. Um, and now looking back, it obviously I wasn't over the trip yet. I didn't come down yet. Like I was still fully in it, but I genuinely thought when I was there that I should be done now. Like the trip should be over and I, I'm still feeling this way. So something must be wrong. I must be actually going fucking crazy. And during this, I was finding it so hard to trust myself and my actions. It was almost like there was a complete disconnect between my thoughts and what I knew was right and the actions I was taking. And there was still some connection there. So I could somewhat be like, mm, let's not do that. But there was a disconnect. Oh God, it's so hard to describe. This feels really vulnerable to share because like I know I was on shrooms and all, but this sounds just crazy. Like I genuinely, I experienced like having a psychotic episode and I was doing things that like were so wild and a little scary and like I wanted to destroy everything. I, and I didn't, but there were a couple things I like threw. I threw on the ground and they were like, like a pillow or something like that. It wasn't like a big deal. And so I think there, I know there was still some connection there where it's like, okay, Cass, you don't, you really don't want to have to clean up after yourself afterward. Like, you know, so if you want to throw something, throw something that like won't cause any type of damage or issues. But I was looking around my room and there was just this sense of like, literally nothing fucking exists. I want to destroy it all. I'm so mad right now. And even like, like I have it in the notebook I was using, this, these little like, like lines and stuff. I remember creating those. I like had my pen and I was just like stabbing the page and like kind of going crazy with it. And it didn't make that many marks, but I like literally stabbed through a couple pages here. And I was, it was like, I was aware that this wasn't who I really was. Like, that's not what I typically do, <laughs> you know, on an average day. Um, but I, I was aware but I wasn't able to act from that awareness. I remember my hair was in front of my face and I like couldn't really move my hands correctly to get it off like I can right now to just do that. Like it was like I was trying to like wipe the hair away and then I kept feeling like more hair that I, I know wasn't mine. It was like, I don't know. I just felt like there was more hair on my face. And I remember I just kept like, 
I looked fucking crazy, guys. I looked insane. I was just on my bed, like trying to wipe this hair off of me. And I was so frustrated by it. I was just like, get it off, get it off, get it off. And at that moment when I was doing that, I realized like, oh my God, this is probably what, I don't want to say like, I know exactly what anyone else, you know, feels, but I'm like, I feel like this is what people that are potentially labeled as crazy or like on something that we see out in the world, what if this is what they're experiencing right now? Because I knew that I, like, I'm not crazy. I'm not, like, this isn't me, but I couldn't act from that awareness. And so I was acting like someone who was going through a psychotic episode because I was even if I'm aware that that's not really who I am and so this brought up so much fear but also so much compassion for anyone that for lack of a better word seems crazy I was like they're not crazy they're just having these extrasensory perceptions right now that they can't control. They're not crazy. They're just having these experiences that the people around them aren't having. And so this allowed me to feel such deep compassion for anyone that has any sort of, I guess, like psychotic mental illness. And I'm not saying like maybe my experience was not what other people feel. I don't know. I just, I felt like, oh my God, now I know what that's like. And it's just terrifying. And it just made me have so much compassion for people. It was so humbling. And I really realized how out of control I was. Like I had no control at this point, none. I was genuinely experiencing my biggest fear, which is losing all control which is I think where most of our fears in general as humans come from. I experience every emotion there is to experience. I experienced all words, which is so weird to say and I don't fully understand it either now. But I remember at the time I was just experiencing all words all at once. And that feeling of embarrassment kept coming up. Like I was so scared to let anyone see this. It was almost like I knew I was not in my right state of mind, but simultaneously felt like this is the real raw me right now. And I don't want people to see that. And so that's what was stopping me from giving my friend a call. Um, aside from the whole loneliness thing and me being the only one that exists, I was also like, I genuinely was like, I'm crazy right now. I'm fucking crazy and I cannot let anyone see this. Now, in addition to everything, let's talk about some of the other just random realizations I had throughout this experience. So this was the best experience of my life while simultaneously being the absolute worst. Like worst experience ever, but so beautiful and so great and I'm so so thankful for it. I realized that I would not ever want to know how I'm gonna die. I wouldn't want that fear to be in my mind. I just want it to happen one day and I don't want to know how or when. I knew I was gonna come back and forget again. I knew I was gonna come back and rationalize. I knew that wasn't the truth and it was a very bittersweet feeling. Kind of like that loneliness I felt. I knew I'd come back to this consciousness, this reality, and be able to feel connected to people again. Like at the end of this trip, I, I was realizing, okay, I can feel connected again. Like I'm not the only one that exists because that's when <laughs> I was too scared to, to reach out to my friend, but she reached out to me. She, she called me a couple times and I finally answered. I was so scared to answer. And finally she was just, she just talked to me, you know, she was just talking and that really, really grounded me. And then I was like, fucking shit, why didn't I do this like three hours ago, bro? I was in the worst psychotic fucking episode of my life and I could have just called somebody. 
but I genuinely thought that's not gonna help. <laughs> Just wild. That is why I, I highly advise having an actual physical trip sitter there with you. Uh, I've never done that, but next time I take kind of a higher amount, I'm definitely gonna do that because yeah, but I realized that I I wasn't gonna be able to perceive time in this really fucking cool way ever again. Or unless I'm on shrooms again, having this deep of an experience. And that was, it was like exciting to come back to this human world. I was like really missing it. Honestly, that was, oh, I'm gonna cry. That was like, it was sweet. I was like missing this human life. I really, I really love being able to experience like just being a human and all the fucking crazy things that that comes with. And it was really cool to be like, wow, I'm, I'm like going back. It, it's almost like I took a trip. Like I genuinely like went out and was somewhere else. And now I know I'm coming back. It's like, I'm, I'm on the plane ride back. I'm on the car ride back. And I know where I'm gonna end up. And I'm so excited for that. Um, but I'm also so sad that those memories from the trip, I know are just diminishing. I already know there's so many things I forgot and this has already been a long video. This has already been a lot of things, but there's so much stuff that I forgot right as the trip ended because I tried to record voice memos, kind of encapsulating everything I experienced just to get it like right off the bat. And there were a lot of things I started to talk about and then my mind just went blank and I was like, wow, the universe just doesn't want me to know these things in the human world just yet. I was only supposed to experience that during that trip. And that goes along with my next realization. My brain wanted to explain everything, but my consciousness now felt a deep need to not explain anything. It was like I had such this higher perspective where I could see that I was God. I am awareness. I am consciousness, just like you are, just like everybody is. I'm not saying I, as a human, am like some special fucking person, no. But I, as consciousness, could see, like, I knew the truth. I knew the truth, I experienced the truth, but I now I could see that I'm just this little human and I'm supposed to have this human experience. I can go off and like take these substances, do different things that like allow me to expand that mind and be able to come back into that just pure state of consciousness. But when I come back down here, I'm not supposed to have that perception fully anymore. I'm not. And so it was almost like, like two versions of me, my human self and my consciousness. That was kind of, it was almost like my consciousness giving me a little pat on the back being like, you did great, but like now, here you go. You're gonna go back to your little life. And you know what, I'm here for you. You're gonna forget some things, but that's okay. You're supposed to. And it was like this cute, really sad, really sweet thing. I don't know how to really explain it or why it was so hard. I think because a lot of what I do in this human world is I express with my words anything that I find helpful and interesting. That's, that's a part of my purpose. That is my purpose. And so to have these huge realizations, things that I can't remember anymore, and to not be able to express them and to know fully that I'm not supposed to know them anymore, that I'm going to forget them. Oh, that was difficult. That was frustrating. That was so sad, but it was so empowering because I knew that I knew that. And when I was coming down from this experience, like I said, I got very grounded by my friend who I was on the phone with and she was just talking to me and I was just crying most of that phone call and she doesn't even know that because it was just it was just a phone call it wasn't like facetime or anything and it wasn't like a loud cry i was just crying because i felt such deep love for the people in my life and i felt so connected to them it was this deep feeling still of like everyone is me in a different perspective and i'm everybody else from a different perspective too we're all just different perspectives of the same thing. And so I just, 
started to see everything connecting. I started to notice, to see, to hear all the synchronicities, the signs. There were things that my friend was saying on the phone and I, I cannot recall them now, but there were things she was saying where I'm like, there's no other reason she would say those exact words unless we were the same fucking person, like in a consciousness level. And I was like, holy fuck, she's the same as me. Like everyone's the same. And it brought me so much love and joy because I wasn't in this anxious state of mind thinking that of like, oh my God, I'm the only one. Now I'm coming out of this. And I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm a different human still, but we're the same consciousness. And we can experience both of those things simultaneously in this realm which is so fucking cool. And so I can just be connected so deeply to the people in my life. It was also this deep feeling of not needing anyone else to fully understand that. And again, it was like a bittersweet thing. I was kind of like, oh my God, this is so cool. I want everyone to know that we're all connected. You know, while my friend was talking, I could have said that. I could have been like, oh my God, like you're saying this and I feel so connected. Instead, something told me, just be quiet. Just listen, just enjoy, just be, just connect. Like you can just, just connect. You can know the truth. And it's cool if other people do, but they don't have to. And that was a really humbling insight. I also realized that I'm so happy being me. I like don't want to be anyone else. And I realized that me truly being me means I'm not like anyone else because we're all supposed to be completely different perspectives of the same consciousness. So we're all supposed to like we're meant to be very different than each other in a human world. And then find the ways that we connect, find all of the synchronicities and the patterns that bring certain individuals together and certain ones apart. And I was just, I felt this overwhelming sense of pride in being me. I also realized that I associate familiarity with safety. Just think about that for a bit. See if that resonates with you. I'd love any insights you have on that. I'm not gonna get too deep into it right now though. And after I was really starting to come down and finally felt like I could eat because throughout this whole experience, I was hungry but could not fucking eat. I couldn't even get myself up to go get food or anything like that. Uh, so finally when I, I felt like, okay, I could have a snack or something, I went and I like opened my front door and it was just the screen closed and I just wanted some fresh air. So I just stood there for a little bit looking out. And then of course, right as I start standing there, like a few seconds later, fireworks start going off. And this isn't in my mind. This isn't part of the trip. Literal fireworks. Cause I can see fireworks sometimes on the weekends and stuff from my place. They start going off and I didn't even realize what time it was. I was like, of course, of course it's happening right now. And I see it from across the street, these girls that like are running. And I think they're just excited to see the fireworks. They're like, come on, let's go, blah, blah, blah. And they're like running and jumping. And like, I think just trying to get somewhere to see the fireworks. And I had this overwhelming, humbling, powerful energy in me that was like seeing that everything I can see was my creation. And I was like, oh my God, this is fucking awesome. Look at all this. This is so dope. Like, wow, I did this. And then it was simultaneously this feeling of being so humbled because I knew my human self was not at all any more powerful than anyone else. Not less powerful, but not more. We just, we all are literally the same thing. And that was just the most beautiful, like couple minutes of my life. It was such, I was just standing there like crying tears of joy and feeling so grateful and connected and powerful. Like I've never felt so empowered and humble all at once. 
And then after this experience, the few days after, uh, the biggest changes I noticed were I felt more connected to people and I could notice so quickly any judgment I felt towards myself or others, as well as I really think this experience taught me to fully love my ego, fully accept my ego, which is in the spiritual community a lot of times labeled as bad. And yes, there's parts of the ego that we can for sure heal and become more one with the world and more connected through healing and dissolving certain parts of the ego. But without our ego, we could not experience this human life. and. I saw, I felt how beautiful this human life is. I don't want to be stuck in full consciousness just yet. I don't want to just be awareness just yet. I want to also be a human, be able to experience awareness from a human perspective. So overall, this was a really <laughs> difficult experience. This was a lot. To deal with i i got sick for a little bit after this my body felt so sore for the next couple days it was i was so tired for the next few days a couple days later i got kind of depressed and in a really low state of mind and i i think that's just because this took so much energy and i genuinely felt like i was there for days having this trip although um, a lot of this, as you could tell, was not fun. A lot of anxiety, lots of fears were playing out. I still am so grateful that I did this and I'd do it again. I learned so much. I gained so much and it was so beautiful. And it's funny because right after the trip, I remember doing my audio recording and one thing I said in it was like, I am not doing any type of psychedelics again. I'm not doing anything. I was like, this was too much. I almost got stuck in psychosis. This was fucking wild, never doing this again. And then about a week later, I was like, I'll probably do it again. Yeah, like after I processed a little bit, integrated some stuff, a month after that experience, I ended up, um, I took basically about half of what I took this time, but it was a major, huge spiritual experience. Um, a lot more positive, very beautiful. So I ended up doing that anyway. And I, I really feel like with this type of thing, it's all about following your intuition. Even if you, you know, told yourself like, okay, at this day, this time, this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do shrooms. Like this is, it's gonna be great. But something tells you that day, like, mm, it's not the right time yet. Listen to that gut feeling and vice versa. If you told yourself, like I told myself, I'm not gonna have a big trip for a while. And then it was a month later, something very strong in me said, no, this is the time, like, you gotta do this. And then it ended up being another one of the most impactful, beautiful experiences of my life. Always just follow your intuition. It will always guide you correctly. I'm, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful. And so I'd love to know any experiences you've had. Um, if you wanna comment down below. Also look at these sun rays, look how beautiful. Oh my God. And if anything in this experience of mine resonated with you, if you've experienced some of the same things, let me know. I'd love to hear the similarities, the differences. If you want me to expand on specific topics or anything or have other questions, please put them down below. I wanna make more videos on this and uh, most of it is just, I need some questions to answer. I need some topics to talk about. So let me know what you wanna see, but thank you for watching. Thank you for letting me share my experience with you. I hope you gained something from this, whether it was just entertainment, information, um, you know, some good insights. Like I, I hope you gained something from this. So I'm sending you so much love. We're all so connected. Mm. So I just hope you have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day, rest of your week. And I'm sending you so much gratitude, so much love, and so much connection. See you later.